Hey everyone, this video is about chain maintenance. I will show you parts of a chain and I will uh, show you which surfaces on a chain should be cleaned and lubricated, the critical surfaces. Uh, first thing first, terminology. The drive train in a motorcycle consists of a wheel sprocket. This is a wheel sprocket, okay? And a sprocket is not the same as a socket. A socket is a wrench, okay? And this one is sprocket. It's not a gear either. Uh, gears have teeth that are designed to mesh together. Sprockets don't. They have a chain looped around them. So this is a wheel sprocket. On the rear wheel, it mounts on the rear wheel with those uh, bolts. This one is an engine sprocket. It's uh, consider considerably smaller and uh, it's got these ribs on the inside. Let's get a good shot there. The ribs on the inside. These ribs mesh with the ribs on the drive axle coming out of your transmission. And uh, so this one is the engine sprocket. Engine sprocket, wheel sprocket. And, uh, and the length of chain that provides the engine uh, power to be transmitted to the rear wheel. It wraps around the sprockets in this manner, and obviously there's going to be a connecting link there that, or uh, or one that's riveted on uh, high-power motorcycles. Manufacturers recommend that this be riveted on uh, low-power motorcycles. A connecting link like that on a bicycle chain is perfectly acceptable. Now, parts of a chain. Oh, there we go. Let's zoom in so you guys can take a good look at this thing. There we have it. Okay, I took apart an O ring chain. O ring chains are uh, different from non O ring chains because they have these little rubber O rings in them. Okay, they are squishy, they are rubber. Let's zoom in so you can take an even better look. Let's see. Something like that. These O-rings have a certain profile. Some manufacturers call these X-rings or they may not have all these ridges on them. Okay, that's how O-rings look like in a chain. And I will show you where they go. Let's see. Okay, so uh, this is how a chain looks like. I'm just up close. There we go. So we start somewhere here. Chains have oops, chains have plates and pins. And this type of chain is a roller chain. Yeah, the chain has rollers as well. These plates are made out of just uh, sheet steel and is stamped just like a cookie cutter your mama would use in the kitchen to make cookies with. Also, you can see some grooves in this one, in this particular model, to uh, accommodate the O-rings a little better. And uh, so this is plate, this is outer plate. Here is another outer plate with pins, and it's got pins. These pins are just circular rod stock, which is cut to size, and then they are uh, the ends of them, ends of the rods are sorry the ends of the pins are worked off like that on a rivet to uh, make a permanent uh, connection with the plates so these are the outer plates and the pins and uh, what else you have here let me just take one more off you also have part of a link is this little piece here on a roller chain which has the rollers on them which should have some sound as they move freely. It's got inside plates and the pins on the inside, on, on these ones are hollow. You can see through them. You can see the paper behind them and the line on the paper behind them. Okay, these are hollow pins. And how the chain is put together is that uh, there is this o-ring between the outer plate and the 
let's put it together and the inner plate between the outer plate and the inner plate there goes this o-ring and another piece of o-ring goes here and uh, and obviously there's gonna be uh, the chain is gonna be continuous so there's gonna be more links to make this one up but uh, you kinda get the idea how the outer plate uh, on uh, closes off the other side of the pin or, and the uh, pin head which I ground off is, and is now missing is worked off the same way as it is there on this side okay now critical surfaces oh sorry uh, one more part is the roller on this totally new chain where you can still see the original uh, grease put in place by the manufacturer I took apart the uh, inner link so there's the inner plate and there is the other inner plate and here is the roller this roller should be freely rolling like so I think you get it I think we've got a good picture here maybe zoom in a little bit yeah this roller here should be freely rotating on the uh, on the hollow pin there we go there's the hollow pin there and uh, normally your chain wouldn't come apart like this I just uh, butchered it so you can see the rotating components uh, in motion and I push this hollow pin out of alignment so you can so you can get an idea of the uh, critical surfaces okay so as you can see these rollers and also the the rollers are lubricated by the manufacturer and also on the other side of this when I pull out the pin from the hollow pin there the pin is also lubricated okay these o-rings here that I'm trying to rotate these o-rings uh, enclose some of the lubricant namely the amount of lubricant that's placed on the outer surface of the solid pin and uh, between the inner surface of the hollow pin so when I put this one through like that and close it off with an o-ring the amount of lubricant again that is on the outer surface of the solid pin and on the inner surface of the hollow pin that lubricant is uh, enclosed and uh, for the length for the uh, life of the chain it will not it will not come out it will not wash out it doesn't get dislodged for the life of the chain okay yeah so that's how the outer plate gets in place and you can see if this was put together properly how it would seal the lubricant uh, in place however where the lubricant does not get sealed in is underneath this roller pin where is the roller pin? here is the roller pin underneath the roller pin so the uh, lubricant needs to be replaced here on the outer surface of the hollow pin and on the inner surface of the roller okay that part let me just go back to my previous chain uh, on this one where it is uh, washed clean and the pieces move a little easier you can see that the roller mo moves side to side is is made that way it's perfectly fine yeah you can see it moving side to side and it's also rotating so lubricant chain lubricant has to get to the inner surface of the roller and to the outer surface of the hollow pin okay there is no need to lubricate the surfaces of the uh, solid pins because the amount of lubricant is enclosed and protected by these o-rings okay so when you clean your chain um, you have to make sure that the uh, these openings that appear on the inner surface 
of the inner plate and the end of the uh, look at this one and the and at the end of the rollers this is where you get you have to get the lubricant in through this little gap there where I put my fingernails in okay that's why chain lubricants are come in an aerosol format so the finely suspended vaporized particles can be deposited there but they will not be deposited there if there's any dirt clogging this little gap here that I kind of opened up with my fingernail again or uh, now on the other side of the uh, roller you can see if, if the roller cannot do this and doesn't rotate freely the lubricants will not be deposited on the outer surface of the whole open okay so uh, that's why chain maintenance has to concentrate on cleaning this roller if you clean the uh, outside surfaces of the outer plate your chain may look very nice but it does nothing to help the uh, help lower the rolling resistance of the chain ideally all of the engine's power should be transmitted to the rear wheel undiminished if you have friction in your way between seizing these rollers where is it come back seizing the rollers it is possible to completely seize up the chain just with the dirt that's deposited underneath this little uh, roller chain links can freeze permanently in something like this shape okay as they try to kind of wrap around the engine sprocket and the uh, wheel sprocket uh, so to prevent chains from seizing up this is a new chain again so it it's not seized up but uh, and I don't have a piece of chain or a length of ch chain that is se seized up but uh, you get the idea uh, you have to get the lubricant underneath the roller so if you clean the outside of the outside plate it doesn't help lower the friction and uh, uh, that shows up underneath the uh, roller if you clean the edges of the outer plates and the inner plates here your chain may look very nice but it does nothing to lower the amount of friction that's seizing up your chain underneath your roller pin rollers okay so uh, that's where chain cleaning and lubrication should be uh, concentrated don't destroy these o-rings there that you see in the in between the outer plates and the inner plates wire brush will destroy it harsh chemicals and solvents will destroy it and once these o-rings are destroyed then the uh, lubricants from the uh, outer surface of the solid pin will come out and the uh, chain will not perform it's gonna overheat it's gonna stretch out and it's gonna be pretty useless uh, fairly soon okay so uh, those are the surfaces that you need to be concerned with and uh, make sure you get top quality chain cleaner and top quality chain lubricant manufacturers recommend that you do chain maintenance every 1000 kilometers more often if you drive or uh, ride your bike in a rain uh, and uh, here in beautiful British Columbia it rains uh, maybe 10 months a year so uh, it has to be done almost incessantly all right have fun riding guys